everybody, this is Perch, and uh, we'll, we'll comment about comic stories and, and plotting and storytelling and everything else. Um, I was at Emerald City Comic Con, walking around. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a show. Um, it, was, it was fun to catch up with some people. It was, uh, you know, Seattle doesn't do the bar cons as much as everyone, but there were some people who got, you know, blackout drunk, for sure. Um, you know, it, it, it still happens. There was some some conflict and some yelling and some arguments and, and you know, and, and also some people just quietly enjoying a drink, having a good time. So I had a good time. People I, I hung out with and, you know, can't complain. Um, I was talking to uh, somebody I didn't know. I was kind of just meeting some uh, new writers. And um, I said, the guy's like, can I pitch you on my book? I'm like, sure, sure. What, what you got? He's like, all right. It's like, do you like Jonathan Hickman? I'm like, okay, but in the in my head, I'm I do I like John Hickman, but in my head, I'm like, uh oh, that's a weird place to start. Um, I, I I I don't know, maybe it's just me as a writer or creator. If I'm like, let me explain my work by telling you about another creator. I, I don't know, I wouldn't I wouldn't lead there, but what whatever. Okay, so he goes, do you like Jonathan Hickman? I'm like, yeah, sure, I like Jonathan Hickman. He goes, okay, imagine the complexity of Jonathan Hickman, but with some Stanley Kubrick elements meets Ocean Eleven. I'm like, oh, okay, so you got a, all right, so you got a visual kind of uh, mess with a heist. Is that, <laughs> I like, by the way, I do like Hickman, I do like Kubrick, and I, I, I like a good heist movie, although um, it kind of, it, it will get to my point here. Uh, but I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's interesting. I'm looking down at the cover, and it, it features like um, what looks like a couple um uh, you know, revolutionary war people and they're fighting a, like a, some kind of zombie monster. And in my head, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to put it all together. Like I, I'm like, uh, all right. Um, don't, don't know. <laughs> I couldn't do it. It was, uh, it was funny to me. Um, but I'm like, Oh, the guy was very earnest. So he, he keeps going and talking about a little bit of stuff. And then, and then, um, I, I, I should do a video, a completely separate video on like how to pitch, uh, when you're at the Comic Con and you're meeting people for the first time, because a, a lot of people made this same weird mistake with me, and I don't know if maybe my face was just encouraging people to to go in weird directions, but they they will make a pitch that is extremely convoluted. And I've said before, and I'm sure you've heard other places, the you need a good elevator pitch. The elevator pitch is something where you can explain your idea in the time it takes to ride the elevator from one floor to another floor, so under 30 seconds. Can you get your message down? This was a struggle for me. I always had trouble when I was putting together either presentations or doing a pitch. I was I was too wordy. So I had to really work to get my point nailed down. If you're listening to these videos, you're like, he failed completely at, at learning how to do that. But you know, I promise I'm these videos are rambly, but I, I can I can do it. I can do it. But that's an important thing. But you gotta have a quick elevator pitch. A lot of people went to this very kind of convoluted thing, and then almost as though they were starting to get insecure. They started reaching out for whatever books were popular at the time and then trying to pull them into their pitch. Like, uh, well, this is um, this is a group of kids and they encounter a fantasy world and uh, they, you know, one of the kids is uh, taken over by a shadow monster and it's trying to sabotage the other kids. And then uh, you've watched Stranger Things, right? It's like Stranger Things. It's a lot like Stranger Things, but there's some Witcher elements in there, too. A little bit, and it's like Donny Cates kind of style of, of writing as well, and uh, you know, with a little bit of a little bit of that kind of Tom King, uh, you know, uh, way of of kind of looking at uh, the bigger picture, and uh, the art style is really, really reminiscent of uh, like all the people you know who are popular right now, and <laughs> I'm like, uh, and then the the I'm like, oh, okay, and then the, the a lot of the people who pitch me are like, yeah, so it's a good book. I'm not selling many though. I'm gonna have to take a lot back. Man, I, I uh, this show kind of sucks. I, I don't know. The people aren't very good. Like, don't don't then take your pitch and wander into to negative land. That's that's a that's a terrible idea. Um, but anyway, I, I it was it was curious to see these uh, you know these pitches to the book where you could do it in a different way. Like you could say, hey, we got a group of kids. It's uh, about friendship. There's some horror elements and monsters. Uh, they come together in the end to try and beat this with some twists and turns. You're gonna love it. Yeah, that would be a good, that would be a way to do it. I'm just saying, you know, you can do whatever you want. But uh, um, I, it, it strikes me as I talk to several people, they all had kind of the same problem. They had two problems. One of which is 
all of them felt the need to get very negative about things. When you're doing your sale, and it, it's hard, you know, especially if you're like me, who's a glass half empty kind of person and the glass has a hole in the bottom of it, um, then it's hard to be positive. But it, when you're trying to make a sale, people are attracted to positivity and they're repelled by negativity. And if you put that out there, they're going to, you know, be less likely uh, to get your book. Um, it's why I, again, and I'm not fluffing the guy, but watching Sean Murphy interact with the fans every, I mean, it was positive, very, very, very positive. Um, same thing with, uh, with Ben watching Ben interact with fans again, very positive. People are coming over. He's engaging. He's selling hello. He's not pushing them. Uh, Sean's over there showing him stuff on his phone. Like, Hey, this is, this is what I'm going to do next. I mean, like he's having a good conversation and, and people are asking, oh. These guys, uh, both Ben and Sean did. I know they did. They were not close to each other, so they both did it independently. A person's like, you know, oh, I really like your stuff. It's like, oh, great. Uh, what do you like? I mean, it was just, it was this back and forth conversation. And and I saw money exchanging hands for as a result. So it's crazy how that goes. Uh, but a lot of people I talked to, they all fell into the same trap. And the same trap was, I guess the best way to call it is, I made it complicated. So... And I, I got to thinking that's a lot of kind of the indie comic stories, too, where they really need to drop like five or six elements out of the book. They've got too many things going on. And as a result, the book's too complicated. It's uh, it's like I, I so I, I went back to thinking about a heist. Um, the If you I, re, I watched Super Crooks um, on Netflix and I loved it. It was an action. It was a, I really loved that series. Just very well done. Animation style was really reminding me of throwback anime and everything else. Uh, and they expanded it. So the original Super Crooks, Super Crooks book uh, by Little France Yu and Mark Miller, they, um, it, you know, it's it's four issues, and that's really the last third of the anime series on Netflix on, on the the animation one. And what reminded me as we're watching this, uh, we finish watching. It, my wife turns to me and she goes, "Oh, that was fun." And uh, yeah, I'm like, "Oh yeah, that was great." And she goes, uh, "It was straightforward." And I think that's why it was fun. And I think I'm like, I think for Memphis, my first reaction is straightforward. Oh, that maybe she didn't like it. But, uh, but no, she was giving it a compliment, which was these, a lot of, uh, especially more modern heist films, they didn't learn the lesson from Ocean's Eleven, which Ocean's Eleven, if you watch that movie, is pretty simple. It's a based in style and, and kind of these the double turn and, and other things, but it's not, it doesn't have a lot of moving parts. It's a fairly fun heist and it's designed to be straightforward with a, with a couple of common heist elements. As people have tried to copy that, they want to insert like a double turn and a, then a triple turn and a time skip and like all this other kind of crap. And it gets, it gets ridiculous very, very quickly. And I looked at you know, a lot of the pitches that were coming out at this show, but also a lot of comic books. Uh, they do this. They they intention well. I, they just intentionally or intentionally, they start to make the comic so packed with with nonsense and crap that you don't even get to enjoy the straightforward elements. You you ruin the heist. If the heist has a triple turn and a time skip, and a uh, you know a a shocking reveal that isn't actually reveal and maybe a dream sequence like you you've done too much you you have failed at doing a a good heist show or a good heist comic and i think if you say if you start off your pitch by saying uh, this is you know hickman meets kubrick meets a heist like I, I can tell you right now without even looking in that comic that is going to be a colossal mess nobody's going to want to read that make sure you have a good core idea and don't overthink it. The, the creator of the of the book has thought about it over and over and over and over. They've 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 invested hundreds, if not thousands, of hours of their life into this script, into this thing that they're doing. And as a result, they start you know overthinking or second guessing a lot of what they've done. They start thinking, oh wait a minute, maybe this isn't detailed enough. Maybe I've uh, oh I should actually uh, maybe I should uh, you know throw in a couple more elements here. It's too it's too uh, vanilla. It's too straightforward. When I talk to uh, writers, that's probably one of the number one things I hear is like when they when they show me their work, like, do you think this is too simple? Do you think this is too straightforward? Do you think this is uh, too basic? Um, and the comment is almost always no, because you can tell when the creator gets in there and starts dicking around with the whole premise and they, they basically write their, themselves into something that maybe they understand. But again, they've spent thousands of hours to it 
and they're handing that off to somebody who's spending their, you know, their first 10 minutes reading the comic, and it just doesn't track. There's too much, too much shit in there. Uh, but it's, um, it, it was, it's funny. I thought you'd enjoy some of those stories. It's, it, <laughs> it is like, um, I, I would like a lot of indie creators to just like, well, here's another example, completely different um, area. Uh, I mentioned this to Ben. Uh, ben had an excellent uh, booth poster, booth little uh, banner behind where he was sitting. It was, you know, dark red. It had uh, the Temple Smith and his little logo there. And that's it. It was it. Um, surrounding him are dozens of uh, anime uh, you know, basically, you know, 50 booze that all were, you know, princesses from Disney, but they're dressed up like Star Wars characters or Marvel characters. And a lot of them are really good, by the way. I thought uh, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the art style were awesome. Uh, there was a guy, uh, who was, uh, next to Eric Palicki who had some, um, uh, kid versions of Marvel characters and they were great. Like that guy was, was incredible. Uh, with what he did. A lot of the art style is wonderful. But the banners, and not this guy, the guy, Eric Palicki, and they had a good booth, and they, they knew what they were doing. They, they did a good job. But a lot of the uh, the other booths had, uh, you know, like, they, they put up half their work on the, it was like 50 things up there, and it was just a hodgepodge of all this crap. And you, you couldn't tell what was going on. Um, you didn't want to know what was going on. I mean, it just, and, and when you get into a convention hall where you got like 50 booze right next to each other, um, it doesn't, it, it's all just, it, it becomes visual noise very quickly. You stop paying attention to any of it. You're like, okay, I give up. This is too convoluted, too complicated. And, and when you're just looking around, it doesn't catch the eye. So I Ben's, uh, does a really good job. Ben pointed out that Greg Capullo's is even better that it's just super simple immediately it stands out. It's, it's classic design, but, uh, I would love to give like a little like set of, you know, instructions, uh, or help to some of the, uh, some people, um, who, uh, <laughs> who go to these cons, like learn how to do a good pitch. Simple is better. Don't overcomplicate it. So you, you just, you know, you, you only have five seconds to get somebody's uh, eye. So don't, you know, don't screw that up anyway. Thanks for listening.